So welcome to unit 11, testing and individual differences. And we are going to be going over module 63, studying genetic and environmental influences on intelligence. And if this is your first time listening to this channel, these uh, slides uh, align with Myers Psychology for the AP course third edition. So this is a rather short uh, module, only two learning targets. The first one being to analyze the evidence for a genetic influence on intelligence and explain what is meant by heritability. The second, to analyze the evidence for environmental influences on intelligence. So we're kind of revisiting that whole question of nature versus nurture in terms of intelligence. So <laughs> just what I was saying, intelligence, nature, or nurture. The most genetically similar people, nature, those that share the most genetically, have the most similar intelligence scores. So remember, when we're thinking about correlation, correlation ranges from a perfect negative or inverse correlation of negative one to a perfect positive correlation of one. So one indicates a perfect correlation and zero indicates no correlation, no relationship. And as you can see, that identical twins have higher correlations of intelligence test scores. It lets us know that there is some sort of genetic component. So how about the specific research regarding the genetics of intelligence? The intelligence test scores of identical twins raised together are nearly as similar as those of the same person taking this test twice. Think about that. So identical twi twins, those monozygotic twins who are the same genetically, identical twins that are raised together, when they take uh, IQ tests, their scores are almost as similar as if it's the same person taking the set test two times. Um, in addition to intelligence, identical twins also exhibit substantial similarity in specific talents such as music, math, and sports. So in general, heredity, according to studies thus far, um, the study suggests that heredity accounts for more than half of the variation in the national math and science exam scores of British 16-year-olds. Are there known genes for genius? Mm, kinda, sorta, but not really. Um, when 200 researchers pulled their data on 126,559 people, all of the gene variations analyzed for only about 2% of the differences in educational achievement. But a follow-up study you know, was able to be a little bit more predictive of school achievement. And we're gonna talk a little bit about polygenic variants in, in a few slides from now, but there's so much research going on right now in the field of um, behavioral genetics, looking at this information. If you are interested in this topic, I suggest looking into Robert Plowman's, P-L-O-M-I-N, research in the area of behavioral genetics. Fascinating stuff going on. So what does the research show regarding the environmental factors of intelligence? In one large Swedish study, children adopted into wealthier families with more educated parents had IQ scores averaging 4.4 points higher than their non-adopted biological siblings. So there must be some environmental influence as well. Adoption enhances the intelligence test scores of mistreated or neglected children. So if a child is in a very impoverished, you know, abusive potentially, um, neglectful environment and they are adopted into a much more enriched environment, as would make sense, it does seem to have a positive effect on their intelligence test scores. Where environments vary widely, as they do among children of less educated parents, environmental differences seem to be more predictive. So there's more of a relationship between the environment and intelligence test scores in certain populations. So here's an AP exam tip. The bar graph of intelligence test scores correlations, correlations that was in one of the previous slides is kind of good to, to think about. Um, you know, <laughs> you might want to understand a little bit about how there, is, there does seem to be a pretty strong underlying uh, genetic component to intelligence. So basically understanding that. So what determines intelligence? Is it genes or is it environment? Well, like most things in psychology, it's not a simple question. And if you remember back to one of our first uh, modules and conversations uh, 
within AP psychology is that there are usually no single variable explanations, right? It's complicated. Seeking to disentangle genes and environment, researchers have compared the intelligence test scores of adopted children with those of their biological parents and their adoptive parents. What's fascinating um, is, is what, this, what these studies have shown. Over time, adopted children accumulate experience in their differing adoptive families, right? So over time, you're gonna, you, would, you would kind of think potentially that children would start to appear more like their adoptive parents in terms of intelligence. Uh, would you expect the family environment effect to grow with age and the genetic legacy effect to shrink? That would be what most people would expect. Um, but that isn't what we found. In verbal ability, who do adopted children resemble? As the years went by in their adoptive families, children's verbal ability scores became more like their biological parents scores. So even though they were in the environment with their adoptive parents, over time, the children's verbal ability scores became more like their, more, their genetically similar parents. You can look at that on this um, visual right here. So do genetic influences become more apparent as we accumulate life experiences? Identical twin similarities continue or increase all the way into their 80s in, in terms of what's been measured. Adopted children's intelligence scores resemble those of their biological parents much more than their adoptive parents. The heritability of general intelligence increases from about 30% in early childhood to well over 50% in adulthood. So, you know, the relationship between intelligence and um, genetics seems to that that heritability seems to increase which is fascinating right may not be what we would think from about 30 percent in early childhood to well over 50 percent in adulthood so what is heritability the proportion of variance among individuals in a group that we can attribute to genes the heritability of a trait may vary depending on the range of populations and environments studied so take a moment, you know, and to like think about what we've talked about in terms of heritability in some of the pre previous modules in the class. And we'll be talking more about heritability in, in later modules as well. You know, throughout AP Psychology, there are always questions that hold that question of nature versus nurture is sort of woven through so many different topics. So what does intelligence is about 50% heritable mean? And what does it not mean? So what it means, genetic influence explains about 50% of the observed variation among people. But what it doesn't mean is that your intelligence is 50% genetic. So it's good to get that clear. So teasing apart the environment. Consider Mark Twain's fictional idea of raising boys in barrels to age 12, feeding them through a little hole. Right? If we were to follow his suggestion, the boys would all emerge with lower than normal intelligence scores at age 12. Why do you think that would be, right? What do you think? You know, they hadn't been exposed to anything environmental, so, um, you know, they would probably be pretty, uh, you know, deficient in certain skills and certain things that we measure on intelligence tests. Yet, given their equal environments, their test score differences could be explained only by their heredity, right? Because if their environment was held completely similar, then the differences in their, their test scores would be attributable to their underlying genetics, heredity. So what does it mean that intelligence may be polygenetic? I mentioned that in, in an earlier slide. Intelligence is polygenetic genetic, which just simply means involving many genes. When we're talking about the relationship between intelligence and genetics. What behavioral geneticists are uncovering is that it's not, oh, this is the, this is the intelligence gene. It's that there are many, 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 many genes that seem to be involved within the development of many behavioral traits but within intelligence for sure. Psychologist Wendy Johnson compares the polygenic genetic effect to height. So 54 specific gene variations together account for 5% of our individual height differences, leaving the, yet, the rest yet to be discovered. What matters for intelligence, as for height, personality, sexual orientation, schizophrenia, or just about any human trait is the combination of many genes. And again, you'll see Robert Plowman um, 
cited right there because he is probably one of the foremost behavioral genetic researchers at the time. And his, he has a very interesting book that I read um, called Blueprint, if you're really interested in the field of behavioral genetics. So what is the impact of neglect? So sadly, we have some examples of how we can study this from different orphanages in Romania and I think some in Iran where there's been a lot of study going on. Some Romanian orphans, such as the ch child in this picture, had minimal interaction with caregivers and they suffered delayed development. So I think what's important to remember is, you know, we are saying there is an underlying genetic component to intelligence, but environment can matter greatly, especially in cases of severe neglect or abuse. So what relationship exists between extreme deprivation and intelligence? So researcher Jay Hunt, uh, Jay, sorry, Jay McIver Hunt, observed that the typical child in a destitute Iranian orphanage he studied could not sit up unassisted at age two or walk at age four. We haven't yet talked about development, but that's significantly delayed from what we would expect normal development to be. The little care the infants received was not in response to their crying, cooing, or other behaviors. So the children developed little sense of personal control over their environment. And they kind of became these passive, what he called glum lumps. Very, very sad. But what training did Hunt conduct? Aware of both the dramatic effects of early experiences and the effects of early intervention, Hunt began a training program for the Iranian caregivers, teaching them to play language fostering games with the 11 infants. They imitated the baby's babbling, engaged with them, played things like vocal follow the leader, and finally they taught the infant sounds from the Persian language. So the results were great. By 22 months of age, infants could name more than 50 objects and body parts, and they charmed so many of the, the visitors that most of them were adopted, which was sort of unprecedented, an unprecedented success for this orphanage. So how can early intervention affect intelligence? In childhood, schooling is one intervention that does pay intelligence score dividends. Schooling and intelligence interact and both enhance later income. How does having a growth mindset, and you may have heard this, this is a popular term. Currently, um, psychologist Carol Dweck reports that believing intelligence is changeable, not fixed, fosters a growth mindset, a focus on learning and growing. A fixed mindset, by comparison to a growth mindset, would support a set, unchangeable level of intelligence through life. So Dweck, in her research, teaches young teens that the brain is like a muscle, growing stronger with use as neuron connections grow. And this is actually an area of continuing research to see um, just what effect growth mindset has in terms of intelligence. And there's lots of studies going on currently um, in this area. Some of the research that has been done in terms of growth mindset is listed here. Receiving praise for effort and for tackling challenges rather than being smart or accomplished. So getting praise for saying, good job on that effort. You're really, really working hard rather than saying, good work, you're so smart, seems to help teens understand the link between hard work and success. The teens that are um, exposed to more of a growth mindset also seem to become more resilient when they get frustrated. Um, superior achievements in fields from sports to science to music, what, we're, what we've learned from research, arise from a combination of not just underlying ability, but also opportunity and very disciplined effort. So we are back to the, the learning targets review. So the first one was analyze the evidence for a genetic influence on intelligence and explain what is meant by heritability. So studies of twins, family members, and adoptees indicate a significant hereditary contribution to intelligence scores, but it isn't just a single gene that we have uncovered. Intelligence seems to be polygenetic. So it seems to be related to many different genes and researchers are currently searching for genes that exert an influence within the field of behavioral genetics. Heritability is the portion of variation among individuals that can be attributed to genes. Analyzed evidence for environmental influences on intelligence. Studies of twins, family members, and adopted children provide evidence of environmental influences. Test scores of identical twins raised apart are slightly less, though still very highly correlated than those scores of identical twins raised together. 
Studies of children raised in extremely impoverished environments with minimal social interaction indicate that life experiences can significantly influence intelligence test performance. So there's a strong environmental effect when there's extreme impoverished, extremely impoverished environments. No evidence supports the idea that normal healthy children can be molded into geniuses by growing up in an exceptionally enriched environment. That's an important thing to remember, right? With everything we see in pop culture telling us how we can increase our intelligence and that kind of stuff, there isn't a lot of support that um, beyond having a normal, healthy environment that we can really increase our intelligence. Thanks for listening. Take care.